to another video. So I decided I wanted to make a series of videos all about starting an online shop or an Etsy shop. So this video is for anyone who's been dreaming about opening an online shop or an Etsy shop for a while but maybe you've been putting it off because you feel overwhelmed or you just don't know where to start. Yeah, so this is gonna be step one, which is all about coming up with ideas for products. And I'm gonna be talking through some of the products I've tried, the pros and cons. This is gonna be a series of videos that's gonna help you on your journey to creating your online shop. Or maybe you already have an online shop, but you just want a bit more help with it, a few more ideas. In future episodes, I'm gonna talk about my design process. So I'm gonna be kind of going into depth on all the different products and how you make them step by step. I'm also gonna have separate videos about photography and packaging and all then the technical sides of setting up your shop and your listings. But yeah, so I'm gonna take you by the hands and tell you that everything's gonna be okay and you can do this and you don't have to get everything right straight away. The whole process of opening a shop can be really overwhelming. There's so many decisions to make that sometimes, yeah, you just don't know where to start. And I know a lot of us have imposter syndrome and we can kind of talk ourselves out of things before we've even given it a chance. So these videos are just gonna be helping you along the way, one step at a time. So yeah, we can tackle it in tiny little bite-sized pieces. Okay, so to start a shop, you need some products. Yeah, you might not know what kind of products to do and you might not also have like any ideas and just be wondering, what shall I make? So one of my favorite things to do is taking ideas from my past self. So have a look at your old work and yeah, just see if there's any ideas any like little drawings or doodles that you like that you could then reuse. And yeah, I love doing this and I'm always grateful if past me has created something that I can use now, <laughs> um, especially if I've just like run out of ideas. And sometimes looking back through your older work, you can actually kind of see things with fresh eyes and maybe there was something that you overlooked in the past. Some of my favorite pins that I designed are my floral cat pins. And these started off as some digital drawings that I'd done. And I had to obviously adapt them quite a lot to make them more suitable for an enamel pin design. Um, but the initial idea was already there. Yeah, have a look back through some of your work um, and see if there's anything that you could use. But yeah, if you share your work on social media, you could have a look at what you've created that people are really engaging with, and then this will give you an idea of what might be popular. If you're already creating art, then it's a lot easier to then transfer that onto products. But yeah, if you create patterns, you could put that onto fabric, or pencil cases or washi tape. Maybe if you create funny characters, they would look great on mugs or greeting cards. And you can apply your artwork in a lot of different ways. If you didn't want to change your artwork too much, then prints or greeting cards would be a good option for you. Prints can be very expensive to make. So something that I've started doing is I do like a print on demand, print on demand prints. <laughs> and in the past I have ordered a few prints and then if they don't sell, then that's quite a lot of money to like invest. But yeah, so print on demand prints have been working for me, but Maybe you don't want to do any print on demand. And if you just want to focus on physical products that you're packing and sending yourself, then another option could be greeting cards. Cause this way you could have your artwork printed out, um, but it's a lot cheaper. And it's also a lot cheaper than for the customer. Like I love prints, as you can see, I have prints behind me here, some of which are mine and some are other artists that I've bought. But I think some people find prints a bit more of a hassle because you maybe have to get a frame and then you have to find wall space as well. Then there's the fact that they're more expensive. 
so yeah greeting cards could be a good option yeah they don't need framing and people can then own a piece of your artwork themselves or they could give it as a gift obviously greetings cards are great for different occasions as well another tip i would say with greetings cards is keep the inside blank and then people can write their own messages and then they can send them for like lots of different occasions as well so stickers are another really fun way of reproducing your artwork you can obviously get them in lots of different sort of designs you could do sticker sheets you could do die cut stickers which just means it's the sticker just on its own some people actually make their own stickers they'll buy like a sticker machine like a Cricut or a Silhouette and then you also need a printer for that this can work out cheaper in the end but there is the upfront cost of having to buy a printer and a sticker machine and to be honest it can be a little bit fiddly and there can be like technical problems as well I've actually got a Cricut machine and I was very excited about it to start off with but now I'm much preferring going down the outsourcing route um because it just saves a lot of time and also I don't have to deal with all the like the technical side of things the profit margins on stickers can be quite small as well something to remember is don't pick up prices based on like prices of stickers that you see in high street shops or from like huge companies because obviously they'll be able to get stickers manufactured in like huge quantities so their profit margins are going to be a lot better you don't want to get some stickers and work out that each one actually costs you like 70p and then just sell it for a pound because then the profit margin is going to be way too low this obviously applies to whatever product you do work out what the item cost is for each thing also making sure that you include like the VAT um because sometimes they'll have that extra and then if there's any postage cost and then also any packaging that you do as well like take all of that into consideration and then work out what you'd price it as do all that before you actually buy the product kind of work that out before just to see if the profit would be worth it for you Yeah, washi tape is a really fun product and it can be used in scrapbooking and in letters and cards and it could be great if you have like patterns then you could maybe put the pattern on the washi tape and you could reuse it for another product so maybe have a kind of collection all with like similar like motifs and maybe have like a washi tape and a notebook or like a sort of pad what do you call it a notepad <laughs> and like different things that kind of go together in a collection would be really good but yeah i think washi tape is just really fun i have quite a collection of washi tape myself and it's really useful for like wrapping sort of presents up or putting on the backs of envelopes um, and people use them for like scrapbooking and like diaries and stuff like that as well a word of warning about washi tapes something i didn't realize about kind of like the printing process was that you can sometimes end up with like a line where the design repeats um because you'll design sort of like a rectangle and then this will repeat again and again along the washi tape but yeah where it repeats you can sometimes get a line down the middle and I didn't realize that this was a very common part of the printing process as a bit of a perfectionist myself I did kind of freak out when I saw that when I designed my first washi tapes but having then spoken to a lot of other artists and creators who have made washi tapes I found out that this is actually just part of the process sometimes the line is more obvious than not if you have a completely white background then you won't have that line at all but yeah in all honesty a couple of faint lines it's not really the, the end of the world because washi tape people like cuts anyway but i just thought i'd let you know <laughs> that that can happen Enamel 
Pins are one of my favorite products to make and it, they were actually like the second product that I tried and I just fell in love with them. But yeah, you do need to kind of think about the design for an enamel pin a little bit more than just taking your artwork and putting it on a product. Like for example, I said about my floral cats, I had to change the design quite a bit in order to make that work. There are artists who can do the kind of design for you if you've already got like an idea but you don't know how to actually turn it into an enamel pin. Some of the companies will offer that. Either they'll charge for it or it will be like within the price and they'll sort of take it off if you order with them. All enamel pins are made in factories in China. So you can either use like a middleman, like made by Cooper, but yeah, there's lots of middlemen companies out there. Um, or you can go directly to the companies in China. I've actually found an article that was from someone called Pinlord, who's recommended lots of different companies in China that he's worked with. So I'm gonna leave that in the description if you wanna go and check that out. The minimum quantities for ordering enamel pins is usually about like 50 to 100 and it can be quite an investment especially if you want to order multiple designs. Quite often people will run kickstarters or they'll do like pre-orders first of all to see like what the interest is. So they can be quite expensive but the profit margins are a lot better than on like stickers and washi tape. They vary in price depending on like the size and any extras that you get. So if you wanted to keep the cost down, then maybe go for smaller pins and don't go for any extras like glitter or glow in the dark or stuff like that. Just keep it simple. Yeah, and then also if you went directly to a manufacturer in China, that would be a cheaper option for you as well. I have a dedicated video all about making enamel pins, which I will link if you wanna go and watch that. The video is a little bit older, so I am planning on remaking that very soon. But if you wanna watch the old one in the meantime, then I will link that in the description. Another option, if you wanted to create badges but you didn't want to do enamel pins, you could maybe do wooden badges. I haven't actually tried making wooden badges but I have done wooden decorations which I really enjoyed. I used a company called Sketch Laser to do this. I've also heard really good things about Zap Creatives so I think I'm going to try them next but yeah there's lots of different ways that you could use your artwork on wood and basically they would just print your design on the wood and then they would like laser cut around it. Yeah, you could do decorations, you could do wooden bunting, you could do key rings or necklaces and earrings and things like that. I know some people when they start their shops, they make a lot of things by hand because they might not have loads of money to invest into getting things outsourced. And I'd say if you do make things by hand, make sure that you charge enough for this. If things are like one of a kind and you're taking all this time to make them by hand, then the price really needs to reflect this because yeah, people are, are buying like a unique product. And even if you're making like things out of clay and you're doing like the same design again and again. You're still making it by hand and like each one is gonna be slightly different. But yeah, just make sure you're charging enough for your time and the materials and the fact that it's like a unique handmade item, if that is something that you're doing. If you order from manufacturers, before you order, double check that the price is gonna work for you, like I said. Like, check how much each item will cost individually and see how much you want to charge for it, um, just to check that the profit will work for you. And make sure you shop around as well. Different companies do different deals. Sometimes they'll do like a deal if you're signing up to their newsletter or if it's the first time that you ordered with them. But yeah, so just have a, a look around different companies. Make sure that you get some samples as well if that's something they offer. So it's not usually a sample of your artwork on a product. It will be just a sample of different things that they offer. 
also if it's greeting cards it will be the different types of paper stock and if it's stickers it will be the different types of stickers that they offer just so that you can like see and feel the quality before you order anything make sure that you triple check <laughs> your design and the quantity and the size and everything that you want if you're stuck for ideas and you don't have any artwork that you've created already then what you could do is maybe make a list of like the different things that you want to draw some people prefer to like come up with ideas by writing things down and some people would rather like draw and doodle and come up with ideas that way but something you could do is think about the different things that you like and also like different hobbies people they either want to buy stuff relating to their hobby because that's something that they identify with or it can be something they want to buy for somebody else because they know somebody who loves reading or someone who loves baking I think coming up with a collection or a set is a great idea because then you can kind of become known for selling a certain product so maybe you create like a space collection and everything is about like stars and planets and maybe star signs and things like that um, or aliens <laughs> but yes creating a collection can be good because then people might want to buy more than one thing um, although you might get repeat customers because they'll come back to your shop and see what else you have that's like similar. I'd stay away from any like copyrighted material so I know that a lot of other shops sell like Disney inspired things or Harry Potter or Marvel but I would rather create my own designs and also like I wouldn't want to do something based on like copyrighted material and then have my whole shop like shut down or have like a huge fine or something like that. You can create stuff based from work that is in the public domain. So for example the book Alice in Wonderland is in the public domain. So you could create products about Alice in Wonderland but you couldn't create it using the artwork from Disney's version of Alice in Wonderland if that makes sense I hope that's not confusing and rather than using like copyrighted material and copyrighted characters you could come up with your own characters so if you love Disney maybe instead of doing Disney artwork you could think about the original fairy tales if you love Marvel you could maybe make your own superheroes or maybe do some like cute animals in like different capes and masks and things like that that would be quite cute keep a notebook or like a digital notebook somewhere to just dot jot dot <laughs> somewhere to jot all your ideas down you never know when you're gonna need another idea yeah you don't have to do all the ideas that you write down some of the ideas you might actually hate but yeah just write it all down and keep it all because maybe you'll look at the idea in the future and then think oh actually if I change that that like there might be something there but yeah so on the subject of imposter syndrome um I reckon that you've got more ideas than you think that you do I reckon that your art is better than you think it is as well because yeah we can be really hard on ourselves sometimes yeah I'd say just take the pressure off start by planning a few different products and a few different ideas the first designs you draw don't have to be the products that you end up with but yeah also remember you don't often see kind of all the messy stages of someone creating a shop you usually just see like the nice shiny finished products and then you end up comparing yourself to that and think oh I couldn't start a shop your first ideas and your first designs um, they might need a little bit of work but I reckon that you have got like a few sparks of ideas in there <laughs> yeah just start and have a go yeah let me know if you have any questions vote for what you want the next video to be because I'm gonna do some more in-depth videos on how to design certain products so would you like to see washi tape stickers enamel pins greetings cards wooden decorations I think that's all the ones I mentioned let me know what you want to see on the next video but yeah and I'm sending you lots of love I hope you've had a wonderful day a wonderful week and I'll see you in, see you in my next video okay bye the question is can I read my notes <laughs> they're not all the way 
over there. And the other question, is this camera wonky? Probably. Do we need to paint this door? Yes, we do. Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So this video is gonna be, um, yeah, this video is for anyone who's been dreaming. <laughs> I'm just looking at my notes. Dreaming about opening an online shop. And I'm also going to be talking a little bit about imposter, <laughs> imposter syndrome. Oh my goodness. Take a breath. <laughs> right, should we just carry on with where we are because it doesn't need to be perfect. <laughs> Thank you for coming. I know that you're trying to do anything to make me smile. 